we're focusing on where those areas of transmission are highest to start over the next few weeks, and it will spread out from there. BC targets COVID hotspots with its vaccination efforts, including police and firefighters in two lower mainland cities. The fact that they're going to, you know, full online learning indefinitely is concerning. As schools in Ontario get ready to close and move to online learning after their April break, BC educators are renewing their calls to ramp up COVID-19 safety measures in schools across the province. If you go looking closely enough at other people's cars, you're bound to learn something about them along the way. For example, these folks probably have a young kid and like Hawaii. And this driver probably has a soft spot for elephants. But what about somebody's blood type, contact information and need for an organ donation? Well, one local man says you might as well give it a try while he finds himself on a long wait list. Uh, my doctor told me three to five years. COVID cases are still trending in the wrong direction. BC's latest numbers cover a three-day stretch. There are 3,289 new cases of the virus being reported across the province since Friday, and 18 more people have died. All of the unfortunate deaths over the weekend were people who were in hospital. Um, they're mostly people in their uh, 60s and 70s, and I'll have that data on Thursday in a bit more detail. Um, but uh, there have, of course, been some younger people, but it is still, we're seeing community dwelling older people who are, are not yet uh, fully protected, who are in hospital right now as well. So uh, it's still um, people by age that are most at risk. A lot more people will be able to register for a vaccine in the coming days. The province is updating its schedule for age cohorts. As of today, anyone 55 and older, born in 1966 or earlier, can register online. People 50 and older, born in 1971 or earlier, can do it on Wednesday. Anyone 45 and older, born in 1976 or earlier, can register on Friday. And anyone 40 and older, born in 1981 or earlier, can do it on Monday. You can register online at gov.bc.ca forward slash get vaccinated. It, it is not about um, wealthy people flying in and going on a ski vacation. It's about the people who live and work in Whistler. As people across the province wait their turn to roll up their sleeves and get the vaccine at clinics like this one in New Westminster, BC is setting its sights on one particular community. As of today, vaccinations have been available for anyone 18 and older in Whistler. To help put the brakes on transmission where we're seeing it happen worst. And that includes places like Prince Rupert and Terrace and recently Whistler. As of Monday, adults who live or work in Whistler have been able to get a COVID-19 vaccine. Vancouver Coastal Health announced the two-week immunization effort for the hard-hit resort community on Sunday. And the move left some people wondering why that region is being prioritized. Please be patient. We cannot go to everybody at once. Like our age-based program, not everybody will get it at once but everybody will get it and have their turn. First responders in Surrey and White Rock rolled up their sleeves as well on Monday. Police officers and firefighters moved up to the front of the line for COVID-19 vaccinations in those municipalities. Sergeant Eleanor Sturko with Surrey RCMP got her first shot Monday morning. It was a sense of jubilation, really, and people felt a sense of relief and, and very happy. So we're very fortunate and grateful to be given this opportunity. The province has set up a specialized web portal just for first responders in Surrey and White Rock. White Rock Fire Chief Ed Wolf says it's an important move because his department cannot afford to see a major outbreak. We're not a very large department, so if we lose uh, even one or two members, it makes a, it makes a big difference to uh, our overall capacity. And the, and the threat of having COVID uh, run through the department is a, a very high risk. You know, for other people in other communities, it's they're still in the wings waiting, and so we also hope for them that uh, their turn comes up as well. But uh, we know that they base their decision to move us up to more of a priority is also based on the COVID numbers we unfortunately have here in Surrey. The targeted vaccination approach has also received some backlash from frontline workers in other municipalities who are not yet eligible to get their shot. All first responders will be getting vaccine. We need to prioritize by where the risk is greatest, and that means that some people will get it before others. In New Westminster, Ashley Burr, City News. 
think the messaging around it has been, I'll put it this way, less than ideal. Not all vaccines are created equal in the minds of Canadians. We look at what's driving growing hesitancy over the AstraZeneca jab. We're moving school online only after the April break. We'll keep a constant eye on the data, on case numbers, hospital capacity and ICU admissions to determine when we can get kids back in the classrooms. Ontario Premier Doug Ford has announced students across the province will not be returning to schools when classes resume next week after spring break. Ford says the community spread of COVID-19 is too high to risk having students congregate after the break. No timeline has been set for when students might resume in-class instruction. The Premier says that will be decided based on COVID-19 data. The head of the Ontario Health Association says hospitals are experiencing a capacity crunch unlike anything they've ever seen because of a spike in more contagious COVID-19 variants. We're told schools are safe. And, and we're supposed to be satisfied with, with just these claims that are being made. Ontario schools are closing to in-person learning as COVID-19 cases continue to surge. Here in BC, educators who have been pushing for more safety measures say the situation on the East Coast is concerning. We heard from Dr. Bonnie Henry last week that we're about a month behind Ontario. And so the fact that they're going to, you know, full online learning indefinitely is concerning. In BC, schools continue to stay open, despite repeated calls from educators for more aggressive measures to combat the third wave of COVID-19, like moving to a hybrid model of remote and in-person learning. At the start of the year, there was um, guidelines created with five stages. Uh, and the intent here was uh, with the goal of having as much in-class instruction as possible, but also the ability for school districts to adapt and change based on the current uh, conditions, safety conditions and reality. Um, what we have to remember is in stage two, when we started in this, there was only roughly 100 cases a day. Uh, and um, that that's changed. What we're asking for is a regional response to the to the current situation. And this means looking at moving stages. But provincial health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry has repeatedly said that schools are safe and she doesn't believe closing schools is the solution. When we see increased transmission in the community, it's when children were not in school. And with the structured time and the important um, structure that school gives to families and communities is really important and it's a less risky environment. Dr. Brian Conway is the chief medical officer of the Van Vancouver Infectious Diseases Centre and agrees with Dr. Henry Stans. It may be that they have to do it in Ontario because they are stretching their ICU bed capacity. But in British Columbia, we're nowhere near there and we should keep kids in school as much as we can. The BC Teachers Federation would also like to see more information on when teachers will receive vaccinations and more transparency around school exposures. We know that data is being referred to, so we know it's being collected um, by the provincial health office, but not shared. While the province is sticking with in-person learning, educators say now would be a good time to implement a hybrid model. Right now, you have you're going to have a, um, students changing learning groups, and so this would be a, a perfect opportunity to to transition to a different phase, to allow for for students to you know have a have a chance to get comfortable in their quarter four in, in a different model. In Burnaby, Marana Fatour, City News. Anti-lockdown protests escalate as those trying to explain the science behind the pandemic come to terms with the anger expressed by protesters. Air Canada could access up to $5.9 billion through the large employer emergency financing facility program. The deal announced by the feds today requires the airline to meet a number of commitments. These include customer refunds for those who had travel interrupted during the pandemic and a promise to resume service at some regional airports. There are also limits on executive compensation and a requirement to maintain a minimum uh, number of staff. Travel restrictions introduced through the beginning of the pandemic have been described as catastrophic for the airline industry. I need a kidney. Blood type, O positive. It's really hard. It's my body is always 
quick. I'm very worried. I decided to myself that, oh, um, I need to do this. Ronald Marmaria lives in Metro Vancouver with his wife and three children. The family enjoy taking bike rides together on weekends. He's also a local roofer, busy working six days a week on some of the city's biggest projects. Ronald is also increasingly in need of an organ transplant. Until now, um, almost two years that I'm doing this uh, work, full-time dialysis after work. So thanks God that still um, I can manage, but it's really hard because um, I'm really get tired, easily get tired. But now Ronald is trying something new to try and find a match. Now your car is not parked very far from here. Can we go take a look at it? Sure. He's taking to the streets, literally, with his plea for a new kidney, along with his blood type and contact information. Ronald says he got the idea from social media and figures no harm in giving it a try while he finds himself on a lengthy wait list. How, uh, how long has this been on here now for? Uh, I think three months. He even had a little help from a friend who made the decals for Ronald at no cost. It's very special because it's very special and I'm very thankful. He also says he's grateful for having a supportive employer and for all the good Samaritans in the community. And guess what? Ronald says the sign may be helping. He has gotten calls, although no confirmed matches just yet. BC Transplant tells us they do encourage people to reach out to potential donors in whatever way they feel comfortable with. In 2020, there were 280 kidney transplants in the province. Ronald says he's hopeful. I very much uh, want to go to back to normal life. In Vancouver, David Zura, City News. The search is on for three puppies who were stolen from a South Surrey home during a break and enter. Police say the break and happened on Saturday afternoon from a home on 8th Avenue near the Pacific Highway. When the residents returned home, they discovered the three lilac American bulldog puppies had been taken. Police don't know the exact motivation of the theft, but say the loss has left both a financial and emotional impact. I don't know what the price of these particular puppies were, but we do know that dogs and puppies, especially during the pandemic, are a high value item. You know, beyond the value of the dogs, we know that this is very upsetting for the people from whom they were stolen. So we're asking for any information from the public. Anyone with information about this theft is asked to contact police or Crime Stoppers. I have no concerns about getting the AstraZeneca vaccine. Tim Caulfield signed up for the AstraZeneca vaccine as soon as he was eligible. The health policy expert has seen hesitancy over that product grow with headlines touting possible blood clot side effects. But he believes the panic is overblown. It, depending on how you how you slice and dice the numbers, it, it's about one in a hundred thousand. You know that those are really, really rare risks of, of, a, of a severe uh, incident. Uh, we're concerned about potential uh, uptake on AstraZeneca. So we'll Still, the uptake on AstraZeneca is noticeable by thousands of unbooked appointment sites in Alberta and across the country. There's, it's a tale of two vaccine stories here. And the AstraZeneca hesitancy bearing out in a new Angus Reid poll. Canadians have overwhelming confidence in every other vaccine, including Johnson & Johnson, which won't be available in Canada for at least a few more weeks. Still higher than AstraZeneca, uh, where more than half of Canadians say they are, they don't have a level of comfort with that particular brand of vaccine. That fits into a larger trend of skepticism regarding the pandemic. The poll found one third of Canadians think the national case count is too low, while one in five think the government is exaggerating the impact. One in five Canadians saying, look, we think that governments are blowing this out of proportion. We don't believe that as many people got sick with COVID as the government tells us they did. Again, uh, and you see those numbers are higher in Alberta. Despite the pushback over potential AstraZeneca side effects, experts insist the transparency shows the system is working. Say, oh, we're uncertain about the science that people aren't going to trust you. On the contrary, trust is maintained. And I actually think long term being transparent, being honest, helps you maintain trust, may, allows you to have that ongoing conversation with the general public. Tim Caulfield now has his first dose, and despite concerns swirling in some circles over vaccine choice, he has one key recommendation. The best vaccine is the one that's recommended and available to you. So get vaccinated. Scott Frolick, City News Edmonton.
this is uh, really a uh, uh, level of violence that, that uh, is, is quite shocking. Canadians opposed to continued lockdowns and pandemic health restrictions took to the streets to express their frustration. Frustration that in Montreal gave way to anger and destruction. While not every protest escalated, the eruption in Montreal, a sign that Canada's science communicators have more work to do. I think it's important for be able to, people to be able to vent that. People who have lost their livelihoods, people who are very upset, it's going to come out one way or the other. And I think if they're going to protest outside Side, that's something that we should accommodate. And I think we should try and understand what their perspective is and try and gauge that rather than try to make it stop. The public has really observed the science unfold in real time here, We've watched sort of speculations and, uh, and inquiry and corrections and a lot of mixed messaging that's been going on for a lot of different reasons. Uh, one of the reasons, however, is that's just how science works, is that we propose hypotheses, we test them, and if they're not correct, we correct ourselves and move on with other ideas and that's how we move forward with a better understanding at each step along the way. Montreal's protest wasn't the only one in Canada on Sunday. Protesters gathered outside a church west of Edmonton closed by pandemic restrictions. A small part of that group tore down some fencing, but the crowd stayed mostly peaceful. The same couldn't be said of protests in Montreal. understand the, 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 the frustration from these young people that, that, you know, like we all have a bit of pandemic fatigue at this point. But uh, when I see a bunch of people who are gathering in large groups and not wearing masks and yelling their airborne aerosols all over each other, it just makes me sad to think that that's going to make things much worse rather than uh, improve the situation that, that we're already in. I have to say that I was stunned because it was a much stronger reaction than I, I expected in terms of the violence, uh, the number of people involved. Daniel Bellon teaches at Montreal's McGill University and says he didn't expect Sunday's protest to turn destructive. Bellon says he understands concerns about loss of freedoms and civil liberties, but says if these protests turn violent, the protesters only hurt their own cause. A lot of people who protest against, you know, masks or public health mandates are against looting and what happened last night in Montreal. So we have also... Uh, be careful here to say that it's not because you, you're critical of the government and public health measures and curfews that you're necessarily supporting loot, looting and vandalism. And I think it's important to, uh, to, to keep that in mind. Bellon adds that while all Canadians have a right to protest and free assembly, those rights are predicated on protests remaining peaceful. And if those opposed to lockdowns want to gain more public support, what happened in Montreal cannot be repeated. In Ottawa, Shaoli Lee, City News. Vancouver's news is always available on the radio with News 1130 or online anytime at citynews1130.com. Your next edition of City News is tonight at 11. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.